Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shi Jun Wang. Uh, in today's video, we are going to continue working on the Chopin fourth ballad. Uh, last time we stopped at major 135, uh, so we are going to pick up from this measure. Um, if you've heard the previous two episodes, I talked about how uh, the three brothers, right? It's a story about three Polish brothers exploring to get treasure in different countries, yeah, in, in Germany, in Russia, and also in Poland. And they all ended up bringing no treasure but a Polish bride. Um, the, the reason I think people related that story to this piece is that this um, theme has three uh, it appeared three times, but with three different uh, feelings. Yeah? And the second time. Yeah, obviously more driven. Yeah, there's more direction. And then here, um, in today's uh, video we're going to cover the third time yeah it's, I think it's a little eerie yeah it's a little strange feeling um, but before that here if I just give you this one excerpt yeah maybe I will do the second time which is in 139 If I put this on the test of the Eastman notoriously uh, Eastman uh, comprehensive exam for doctor degree, if I just give this as the score ID, I would say non pianist will say this is by J.S. Bach. Yeah, this is a fugue. Uh, this is probably the strato section of a fugue. Uh, what is a strato? Strato section is when Bach or any composer, when they start to compile, when they start to overlap each s subject, yeah, one subject, and then it's not until it's finished, another one comes in, and then not until it's finished, another one comes in. And that strato section usually appears towards the end of a fugue, uh, to show the most intense, and you, and the ma the matter of fact, it's usually about sixty-ish percent um, of the piece uh, it appears right in the golden section um, of, of a piece. So, so if we're curious, we might even think this one, uh, one thirty-five, yeah, because the whole thing has about two hundred. Uh, 39, yeah, 239 measure. So this appeared at the golden section of, of of this piece. So it's really, I think, heavily influenced, if not solely influenced by J.S. Bach. So it's a fugue. It's a canonic or canon. Yeah. <laughs> But of course, this is romantic, so it's it's tonal, and it has so many uh, chromatic neighboring tones. Yeah, so it's just the whole thing is G minor, but yeah, with so many chromatic um, upper neighbor or, or lower neighbor. So two things I want everyone to keep in mind: um, this thing happened three times with four measures each. Okay, and within the four measures. The first two measures is the strato feeling. Yeah, it's this intensity building up. Uh, and then... Tension released, yeah? Because you have a C dominant 7. Resolving to F. And then... And then another canon or another few comes in or, or few go section um, the the other thing I want everyone to keep in mind is that um, how do we 
make sure that our audience knows it's a imitative section, not by playing the pitches only. Yeah, I, I say this, uh, I think in the previous video, I joke with my students, I say not all of your uh, audience's members have taken the solfege class, the ear training class. They know this is A, B flat, D. Um, but instead, how do they know by musical phrases? So the ups and downs, the crescendos and diminuendos within the phrase. If left hand imitates that, Second time is in B flat minor, but instead of two times, it's three times. Yeah, bass, tenor, and then soprano. Even the fourth time, of course, it happened in the uh, in the middle voice, but almost feels like it's. There are four entrances. Okay, so it, the building up is is more intense, um, and the third time. That's the top. Now we find the way back. third time of the theme. Of course, the theme still... We have this struggle between the F minor tonic chord and then the diminish with a F pedal point. Yeah, everything is the same. The harmonic structure stays intact. However, we have a very peculiar right hand rhythm, okay? seven notes, eight notes, ten notes, his sole attention is to break away from the left hand. Yeah, so that it's not da -di, da -di, da -di, da -di. it's not perfectly lining up together. Um, I think this is almost, almost sh him, sh Chopin, trying to, to trying to give us a feeling of something that is out of the control. Yeah, it's something over a whim. It, it's not something well planned. Yeah, of course he well he plans this well, but he wants us to create this image of something you just can't wait to say. develops into something so the register really matters yeah before it's here yeah in the middle register and then strange eerie feeling um, however this time left hand this almost like a barker roll 
yeah, the bold song. Um, and uh, I have a very interesting observation. Um, this is the beginning, yeah, of the bold song. And of course, any music you have to develop into something big, right? Or develop into something different. Um, this is measure 169. In measure 191, so about 20 measures later. <laughs> is exactly the same as as the ocean etude so i guess you started with a bold song and then you i guess started from doing this in a canal or in a, a river and now you're turning this into the ocean yeah so a couple of things we have to pay attention in this section Number one, the right hand, but remember the pinky is really up against 20 plus notes. Yeah, not only the right hand, but also the very low left hand. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to make, uh, press every note, only to show the top and then left hand of yeah so no accents yeah this is really imitating water so if you word, if you have accents then it really ruins the feeling so left hand is always in three and here the right hand has this rhythm but then the melodic notes which Chopin highlighted with a separate stem is in four I think it's probably the most breathtaking <laughs> beauty uh, in in this section. Um, and before this, it was dolce. So I imagine this is not something you have to play. Yeah, like if you listen to Joseph Hoffman, that's that's his choice. But I like this to be more. Closer to the Debussy feeling. And here, the left hand is a little bit tricky since it has a lot of. Then if you're used to yeah so I guess uh, practice this and then opus 10 number nine will of course better prepare you for 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 this uh, the, uh, well it will better prepare you for anything Chopin ever <laughs> writes uh, because it's very similar technique so it requires a super relaxed uh, and responsive wrist. Okay, that, that the wrist can help extend the fingers. Um, and of course, we push this onto measure 191. So. Yeah. So, yes, how do we keep this? 
the key is not to keep the octave uh, secure, is to keep what's in the middle because that minor third, major third, perfect fourth, and then finally a tritone. That is the changing factor. So we have to make sure the second finger is in place. Um, and here. <laughs> Sevens uh, arpeggio, we have to of course know the position and make sure separate from the fourth finger to the uh, thumb. I've seen so many students trying to connect it because while well, Chopin wrote a slur, I, I don't think it has anything to do with with the technical aspect. Yeah, so if you try to connect it it will ruin the position of the next couple of notes but try to find the next one as quick as you can with very confident separation between this and that okay um, and here in uh, 198 it has a strato and in the romantic sense strato means speeding up yeah but you start slow yeah almost this makes it feels like you're you're out of control yeah emotionally you're out of control and Chopin rarely writes for tcmo and eh? but here we have three of them clean cut of the pedal okay and then silence yeah take as long as you can and you a lot of times if you perform this in a, a, a group that is not familiar with this they will clap and let them that's okay <laughs> they will quiet down and this this is the most Purifying, religious, yeah, section, and of course we can sense or we can hint the parts um, from the previous section. It had um, this corral. Yeah, so we know we know this would come. But um, my uh, professor at uh, Eastman, Nalita Chu, um, she used to <laughs> joke about this part. He said, well, not only that the piece needed this prayer, but also the performers, yeah, because what's coming is very difficult and you need to really sincerely pray to God be able to finish this this section which we will focus on this last three pages uh, in the next video and and it will be i will turn that uh, tutorial into something like i did in the chopin etude series we would analyze each single different techn uh, technical um, uh, uh, difficulties and then break them down and hopefully make it easier for the students to learn. Okay, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.